back to another vid, pickups vid. Vampire's Kiss behind me on the SNES. Not the original, unfortunately. It was or is a ROM that I'm playing. I think the real game, boxed, really good condition, which I'd want it in. You're looking at about 500 quid. That is not happening anytime soon, put it that way. But I would like it. Nice pal purple box. Yeah, that'd be a good game. One for the future. So, and look, well, it's Christmas, isn't it? So if any of you lot want to... Nah, I didn't think so. Maybe one day I'll get it. So that is for future. Yes, yeah, so this is a pickups vid. Thanks to everyone who watched, commented, liked, all that kind of stuff. Uh, my previous vid, that was the, the vlog vid, the brew, which I did last Friday. And yeah, my first vid, I think for like three and a bit months. So I appreciate the uh, reception. Thank you, it was good. It's good to be back and having had some time off. So, but yeah, that was that vid. If you've not watched it, of course, please feel free to uh, watch it. It's there until, well, forever. Really, once you put something out on the internet, it's never going anywhere. Just be careful what you say and what you do. I think that's um, it's important advice. So yeah, this is a pickups vid. There are one, two, three, four, five, six games. So not an amazing amount, but five different systems. So yeah, a couple of them I've played a little bit of, and a couple have arrived just within the last few days. So yeah, it's not a gameplay impressions vid or any of that. It's just just a pickups vid. So let's start off with uh, with this one here. So a little bit of a story. So this is a, a, a classic game. It's probably the most popular game on this particular system. Possibly, if not, then it's certainly one of them on the Mega Drive, so you've probably already got an idea what it is. But I, shockingly, didn't have it. And I just, for the life of me, I can't understand why I didn't have it. I thought I did, but I think the reason why I thought I had it is because I did have the Genesis version going back several years. So maybe in my head I just thought, well, I've got the Mega Drive version, and I've got the, this game as well on like a, a modern system compilation, and then there's another version of it. Uh, it's it's kind of like a remake of sorts. Anyway, that game, if you hadn't already guessed, is Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive, like I say. And I just, I love the, the artwork, the spines, the box. This design with the black and white kind of checkerboard. And, uh, or oh, say black and white, it's kind of black and a silvery really, isn't it? Or grey. Yeah, it just looks really good and really nostalgic. So what it was, basically, how I came to get this game, even though I thought I had it, which is unbelievable. I mean, I did have it back in the day as a kid, obviously. But uh, the reason why I thought I had it recently is because it's such a classic game and how can you not have Sonic if you've got a Mega Drive? It doesn't make sense. So I was going down the, the gaming YouTube rabbit hole. You know how it happens. And there was a video recommended to me randomly of just like the first few stages. In fact, I'll tell you what it was. It was a long play of Sonic and I was never going to sit down and watch it. But I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll just press play. I was typing a few emails out. So some kind of like audio and the occasionally glance over at uh, an adjacent window where it was playing and I thought I'll, ju I'll just put it on just to get that kind of nostalgic vibe for it so I did I put it on and I watched the person kind of blitz through the first sort of couple of stages on like the oh god what's it called like the um, green hill zone is that what it is and the bright colorful graphics it was so vibrant and it took me back it was obviously very nostalgic and the music was amazing and then I watched um, I think the next stage after that and again the music was really kind of just bringing back all the memories and I thought you know what I'm going to stop watching this vid uh, because I, I didn't want to watch someone complete it I thought I'm going to play it myself so I stopped the vid and with Sonic on the mind obviously just having watched the vid the first couple of levels and I thought yeah I'm going to go and get it so I went into these kind of drawers behind me and I couldn't find it for the life of me amongst all my games amongst the Mega Drive games it wasn't there and that doesn't make any sense why have I not how have I not got it I must have it so unless I've misplaced it uh, the point is I just couldn't find it. So I thought, well, I've got to get it. So after recovering from that shock of not having Sonic the Hedgehog, I thought I'll go onto eBay. So the first port of call was to go on ebay.co.uk, despite being in America, because obviously being a PAL game, I thought, well, that's where I'm going to get it. And they're cheap, as you'd expect, you know, a quid, two quid, three quid here and there. Not very expensive. Postage is a bit of a kicker. You know, people asking for five, six, seven quid, 10, 11, 12 quid for one game. Probably costs about five pounds, six pounds maybe, I think. Um, but eBay, load of chances, obviously. So I thought, you know what? Yeah, I could probably get it for around about maybe eight pounds delivered there or thereabouts. But I thought, just out of interest, just out of curiosity, what are the chances? What's the harm, really, of going onto eBay.com, the American website, and having a look? And so I typed it in Sonic Mega Drive, and would you believe it? This copy came up from an American seller. I couldn't believe it. And they wanted, I think, like $4.99 in dollars. I don't think there was any shipping involved. So, yeah, let, let's just round it off and say $5, which is around about four quid. 
and I instantly just kind of bought it. There was even a best offer feature, but I thought, you know what, I'm not going to mess about. I'm happy to pay that. And it arrived, it's in really nice condition, and I've been playing it a little bit, and it's brilliant. Sonic the Hedgehog is a brilliant game. I don't know why I'm showing you the back of the most common game in the world, but uh, or one of them. But absolutely amazing. It brings back so many memories. That whenever I play like Mega Drive and SNES games, it just, it, honestly, the Amiga as well and the Atari ST, that kind of late 80s, or in particular with the Mega Drive and the SNES, more of a, an early 90s, early to mid 90s. But it just, all the memories come flooding back. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes I do kind of, not so much question whether I want to buy Mega Drive and SNES, because I absolutely adore the systems and love the era, but because the prices are so expensive for, well, for most games, not this one of course, it sometimes makes me think, well maybe I should not stop, but maybe have a bit of a hiatus, um, because games are so pricey and getting them in the right condition, all that kind of stuff. But then all it takes is to get one of these games again and start playing it, and it just takes me back and it reminds me that I just love that era. I mean, I knew it anyway, of course, but... Yes, yeah, so I'm having a lot of fun with it. Now, I watched a series of vids. I, I apologies, I can't remember who was the originator of the video. But there was someone who put out a few vids of, like, what's your, your most uh, favourite game, your least favourite game? Like, the most popular game, but you don't like. All these different kind of variations. And there were some people who said that they, they just don't like Sonic or don't like Mario or, or whatever. For me, I love Sonic. I'm more of a Sonic person, a gamer, if you like, or fan, than Mario. It's not that I don't like Mario. I do. But I think for me, Sonic, it's just everything about it. It's the speed, it's the, the, the colourful graphics, it's just everything about it. I just really love the game. And of course, didn't they re-release the, the trailer for the movie that's coming out next year? And it looks a heck of a lot better. If you've not seen it, you should watch a comparison. I think it was last year, the first trailer was released and it just looked dreadful. And this one, the new one, actually looks alright, surprisingly. So next year, might watch it, might not. I'm not going to go out my way to watch it, but if I see it, then... You know, if it's on Netflix or whatever, I might, I might watch it, but uh, I definitely wouldn't have watched the other version. So that's that. And then the only other thing I'm going to say about this game, about Sonic, and I can put it down, I guess, is that obviously on the PAL version, with it being slower, that whole kind of 50, 60 megahertz gig that's going on with um, the Mega Drive and the Genesis versions, what I will say is that, yes, the music on the first stage is obviously very slow. Well, throughout the game, in comparison to the Genesis version, but some stages work much better with the slower music. I will say that the, the first couple of stages, definitely the Genesis gets the, the upper hand. The faster vibe because you're racing through the levels. Uh, the Genesis music probably sounds better. This is more nostalgic, because this is the version I had as a kid. But yeah, maybe subjectively the Mega Drive, uh, the Genesis version is better. But when it gets onto, I think, the second stage, where you've got like the flames kind of leaping up from... Um, from the fire that's going uh, in the, above like the water. I think it's a second level, I forget what you call it. But that slower paced music on the Mega Drive much suits the game, uh, much better than the, the Genesis, in my opinion. But I guess it is just a game of opinions, isn't it? So anyway, that's Sonic, really pleased to have it. Flabbergasted I didn't have it, um, or like within the last sort of few years anyway. But like I say, maybe I was getting confused with having the Genesis version, uh, which I've long got rid of because I can't do I just can't do Genesis. It's got to be Mega Drive. The name sound, sounds much cooler, and of course, it's nostalgia. So, got to be Mega Drive, hasn't it? Next up, let's go with this PS1 game. Now, this did arrive a fair while ago, but because I've not made a pickup vid for about four and a half months, which is shocking, I would like to do them more regularly. Maybe, maybe as of next month, or possibly of next year, but in the future, I'd like to do them maybe one a month. I think that's, that's more than reasonable. But of course, it comes down to what you're buying. You know, I'm not going to go out and just buy a load of games just for the sake of making a vid. But I would like them to be more regular. Anyway, so this one, yeah, I've had it for a fair while. It's on the PS1. Again, pal. Just very quickly, you might have got a sneak preview there when I held it up. Uh, I've said this a million times, but just maybe you've forgotten. I doubt it. Or maybe you're new to the channel. When it comes to the retro stuff, so we're talking everything pretty much, certainly up until maybe like the turn of the millennium. And then maybe... Maybe including the PS2. Um, I've kind of I prefer to buy PAL because it's the nostalgia. Anything after that, absolutely 360 PS3 onwards, American all the way because it's. I mean, I've had my visa uh, to come to America since 2008, so I've been here a while now. You know, um, so I don't have the nostalgic ties really to the 360 and the PS3 because I think the PS3 and the 360 had only been out about a year or two in the UK before I came here, so. That's that. So that's why I bought another PAL PS1 game, and it's Diablo. 
and I love the cover, it looks really kind of vibrant and pretty uh, menacing, if you can even work it out. It looks quite dull in colour, maybe it's the contrast of the, um, the computer not quite giving it full effect, but in person it looks uh, pretty good there. Of course the standard black spines with the white writing, which is very regimented when they're all lined up on a shelf, but I think they look really cool. You know, I like the PS2 games as well, there's one coming up in a second, the PAL PS2 games, which like I said, I'm not that bothered really. Uh, I could buy American PS2, but I guess I just prefer the PAL stuff, the, the regimentation of the white spines, which some hate it, and I do understand why it can appear a bit bland and too regimented, but I kind of like it. Um, but anyway, I like the, the Black Pal uh, thick kind of PS1 spines. So yeah, it's basically a, uh, a strategy game, a hack and slash, and uh, yeah, it's, it's obviously got a great reputation. You can't work it out on the back. Now, really, in the past, these kind of games have not been my cup of tea. I often say this, strategy games, real-time strategy, um, point and clicks, all that kind of thing. They're, they're the kind of games that I love the idea of getting into them, but it's just finding the time. Because really, you can't just put these games on for a quick 10 or 15 minutes. You really need to kind of sink your teeth into them and, and spend an hour or two, or even more, several hours maybe, at a time. But I'm really pleased to get it. And yeah, I am looking forward to, uh, to giving it some time and devotion in the very near future. And then the last thing I'll say about that is you may have noticed that £39.99 sticker, um, obviously pound sterling. So I did buy this in America from an American seller. Even though it's 40 quid there on the sticker, they wanted $80 for it. $80, buy it now, or a best offer. Now, $80 is around about 70 quid there or thereabouts. I was never paying that. Not just is it not worth it when it sells in the UK, but it just, um, it was it's never gonna sell for that amount, even if it is worth it, in America. Because think of all the people, how many people really, in the scheme of things, in the States, are wanting PAL PS1 games that are not exclusives? How many? Not that many, really. Some, um, maybe expats who have the nostalgia for the PAL stuff. Other than that, who's gonna do it? Not many people. So I watched this item, uh, a particular seller who was selling this Diablo for um, the best part of, I don't know, I was watching it for a few weeks maybe, and um, no one was buying it. And I looked on ebay.co.uk and you're looking at around about sort of 30 quid. I've seen it go for like sort of late 20s, early 30s, up into maybe mid 40s. Uh, depending, I guess, on, uh, on condition, on whether it's complete, whether there's a bid in war, lots of factors. Anyway, so there's no way I was paying like, you know, 70 quid for it, $80, it just wasn't happening. So I sent the seller a message, along with a best offer of, I think it was 39.99, which like I say, is how much this was uh, originally, but 39.99 in dollars. And uh, so half what he was asking, and I just said, look, you know, I think it was free shipping as well, and I just said, look, I'm not being funny, uh, $80 is out the question. It usually goes for around about sort of 30 quid, 35 quid. Will you accept $40? Um, there or thereabouts. It might even have been a bit less than that. Maybe it's 35, something like that. And I was expecting him to counter it, but he didn't. He just accepted it and just said, sure, all right. Brilliant. So really pleased to get it. But I pretty much paid the going rate at around about sort of 30 something pounds or about 30 quid. I think there or thereabouts, it's probably what it usually goes for. Maybe I say five or 10 quid on a good day, but either way, I've not massively overpaid. Maybe I've slightly underpaid, but I'm pleased to get it. So that's Diablo on the PS1. Let's move on to, speaking of PAL PS2, there's one game here. I've not stuck this on yet, but I did watch a couple of reviews as the disc nearly falls out of the tray. Um, yeah, I watched a couple of reviews as I did with the next game in a second, which I'll show you. But you can't trust social media, you really can't. It just sums it up completely. Because the first video that I watched for this, uh, the person was scathing. They said, oh, it's terrible, playability is rubbish, uh, there's not many options in the game, the graphics are bad. Of course, it's aged because it's PlayStation 2. It came out in 2002. So I think people, you have to bear that in mind. Of course, it's going to look bad um, if you're going to compare it to modern stuff. So yeah, they were quite scathing about the game. Like, Don't buy it, waste the money. And then I watched another review, a gameplay review, and they were like, you know what, this is really good. Yeah, the graphics have aged. Common sense approach, they've aged, but of course they have. It's, it's still a decent game for a PS2. And he was recommending it. So what can you do? It just, like I say, it sums up social media. You get your people who love something, you'll get people who hate it, and it's you've just got to make your own mind up. And just whatever, whatever you want to go with, your opinion is the right one. Not someone else's, your opinion. Anyway, that game is Turok. Evolution. I know some people uh, people say Turok or Turok. I've always said Turok ever since the days of the N64. So uh, I guess out of stubbornness uh, and nostalgia again, I'll I'll continue to call it Turok. So yeah, there's the uh, 
the bland kind of spines with a bit of a tear in the plastic there. That does annoy me a little bit. I've got to be honest, but it's not a deal breaker. So this was again, an American seller was selling this one on eBay, 99 cents starting bid. Me, obviously, muggins over here. I was the only person, as you can probably imagine, to bid on it and, uh, and I won it. It might even have been free shipping actually. So uh, the seller, if that was the case, obviously lost out because it probably cost at least a couple of dollars to send. So, um, but yeah, I was pleased to get that. Now, the game is kind of mint condition inside. The instruction manual doesn't even look like it's been used. Uh, very crisp in there and you've got like an acclaim uh, registration card. The disc is in there, of course. It's slightly loose because the, um, the kind of thing, the holder that you press down on, it's got one of the tabs is broken. Um, but it, it stays in, uh, relatively speaking. If you shake it, it doesn't move about, so it's fine. So yeah, um, Turret Evolution is basically just, well, I'm sure you know the turret games. Uh, just a, a first-person shooter of sorts, action-adventure. I think there's elements of platform in there as well, which I really like. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. But yeah, I'm looking to, looking forward to playing it. I think from the, the couple of videos that I watched, it looked okay for me. You know, yeah, it's, it's not modern in that sense, so it's going to be slow. It's going to be slightly clunky like a lot of the older games are. But I can appreciate them. And as I get older, I become even more appreciative of these games. It doesn't hinder my enjoyment of the game. Now, you know, they used to, even just going back like maybe two, three, four years, I did have a problem playing a lot of PS2, even PS1 games. But now I just, I don't know, I'm kind of, I, I just appreciate them for what they are and what they were. They're not trying to compare themselves to modern stuff because, of course, this modern stuff wasn't out back then. So they were, they were just going on what they had at the time. And if you play those games with that kind of mindset, I think you uh, you enjoy them a lot more. You accept them. I do anyway. So that's that. Now let's move on to a game for the Xbox. This is an Xbox, original Xbox exclusive. And I've wanted this. Let me just see. When did it come out? 2004. So I've probably wanted it since not long after that. So it was around about 2004 when I got my original Xbox. And this kind of game really appealed to me. Kind of a swashbuckling pirate adventure, free roaming uh, again, platformer of sorts, or platform elements. A little bit of a similar game to, to Turok Evolution, really. And that game is Galleon. So I really like the look of this. It might be called something different in the UK, in PAL regions. I think it is called Galleon, but then there's like a sub kind of title underneath. I'm sure there is. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but and I think it may have a different cover too in PAL regions. Uh, but this is the one we've got over here in, in America. So there's the spine, just in case you want to see that. Might be a different colour. You might be interested. So there's the back, you can't really work too much out. Uh, as ever, as you would have noticed, I would have put screenshots anyway for you to see. I would, in an ideal world, like to put some gameplay. I don't have a capture card. I used to. Never say never to doing it in the future, but, um, you know, listen. I think the, the photographs, the pictures will do, and if you really want to check it out, I'm sure you're going to do that. I mean, because I do that sometimes. When I'm watching someone doing a pickups vid, I'll maybe I'll pause the vid, I'll open up another window and I'll check out a bit of gameplay, or maybe after the vid, that kind of thing. So, uh, it's not the end of the world having gameplay. So yeah, I like the look of it, but again, much like Turok, it was another one where I went onto YouTube, the social media, and someone really loved the game, praised it, and then someone else said it was rubbish. Scroll down the comment section, and again, it was just a mixed, you know, uh, message of opinions, really. It was some people really liking it, nostalgia that people had for it, others saying it held up really well, others saying it was very clunky and it was rubbish. So, we'll see. I've not given it a go, but I'm really looking forward to it. I love the kind of pirate theme. I've always had a bit of an interest in that since I was a kid. It just looks cool, like the attire and swords are cool and cutlasses and all that kind of stuff. And pirate ships, of course. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think there's a few skeletons in there, which is always good. Any games which have skeletons in, that's, that's, uh, that gets extra marks and thumbs up, I think, from me and from most people. So, I'm looking forward to it. I think it looks pretty good, even if it may well. The general consensus was it is pretty clunky, but even the people who were admitting that were saying it's still a good game. So I'm looking forward to it. And then last but not least, we've got two PlayStation 3 games. One of them I showed on my vlog. If you watched that, like I say, if you didn't, please feel free to go back and watch it. It's the last video I did. And uh, so I'm not going to talk about it too much here because, of course, I did it then. I spent five or maybe ten, maybe more minutes talking about it. And it's uh, Medal of Honor Warfighter. So, yeah, um, I personally prefer the earlier, the first Medal of Honor on the PlayStation 3. I think it's just a better all-round game. This is still good. It's still decent. The only thing I didn't mention that I can think of off the top of my head in the first vid or in, in the brew, the vlog that I made, was that uh, there's a feature in there which is like where you can breach the doors. 
It's not the first game to have done it. There's many games that have done it in the past. And it's like a cutscene event of sorts. Oh, quick, uh, quick time. It's a cutscene which leads into a, a quick time of sorts event. So basically, like a pre-animation will, will start and your colleague, one of your colleagues will uh, kind of automatically kind of kick down the door, for example. And then you walk into a room, and the screen kind of slows down. You control, obviously, the, the player with the gun. And the idea really is to get headshots. You don't have to, you can just kill them like naturally uh, anywhere on the body. But the idea really is to get headshots because the more headshots you get, the more you unlock different animations to breach the door. So instead of kicking it down, for example, he may pull out a shotgun and, and shoot it open, or he may put some explosives or something on the door. And it, so there's, I think there's maybe eight, nine, ten different uh, animations that you can unlock. It doesn't do anything, you don't need them. Um, it's a bit of, not quite a gimmick, it doesn't really need to be in the game, it doesn't really offer you anything. It will give you a trophy if you unlock them all, or an achievement if you're playing on the Xbox. But apart from that, it's, I don't know, many games have done the whole breach thing before, so it's not new. But um, I guess it's, yeah, they it, it put it in, fair enough, it's an extra little thing, isn't it? But maybe they could have worked it a bit better. So yeah, anyway, that's Medal of Honor Warfighter. It is a good game, I do like it. But I just prefer the other one. But it was cheap. It was, I think, five or six dollars there or thereabouts. I can't remember how much I paid. But it is good. I had a lot of fun with it. I finished it on the harder setting. But it's just, for me, not as good as the other one. But worth picking up. Why not? And then last but not least, it's and that the game is Mafia 2. Like I say, on the PlayStation 3. So yeah, I downloaded the demo ten years ago. Or nearly ten years ago. Loved it. I thought I'm going to get the game. And I never did. I never got the game. Can you believe it? I don't know why, sometimes we've all got these games, maybe that's a title for a vid. Games you've always wanted to get, but for some reason you've just never bought them. Um, maybe that'd be a rubbish idea actually, but <laughs> we'll see. But well, this would be one of them, I've always wanted to get it ever since that demo. Never got round to it until almost a decade later. So think of it like a, a, a smaller scale Grand Theft Auto if you like, an open world game. Not quite as much to do like as in a Grand Theft Auto, but nonetheless an open world game. Uh, but dealing, uh, I think it takes place in the 40s in New York. So the setting, the attire that they're wearing, the music on the car radios, and obviously all the cars are all kind of like wartime and that kind of a time period, which is honestly just, I really like it. It just seems like a really, if you take the war away from things, which can't have been a pleasant experience, of course, but take that away from it, that environment, that time period, it looks like kind of really smart and respectful. And I just like the music's cool. It's just, it's just really, really good. So driving around randomly or in between missions or just going on a bit of a sort of a, a stroll and listening to the music is just really good. There's a couple of Christmas songs playing when it's snowing as well. So it kind of adds that sort of, uh, it makes it almost borderline a Christmas game of sorts. Listen, if you're going to count Gremlins as a Christmas movie, you can count Mafia 2 as a Christmas game. That's my thinking. So, but yeah, I just really like it. Graphically, it holds up really, really well. There is a, a big butt coming here. But yeah, graphically really, really good. Uh, the storyline's good, the acting's good, the playability. It took me a bit of a, a short time to get used to it. This is off the top of my head, so apologies, I may have this wrong. But on the PlayStation 2 controller, I'm just trying to think of it now, I think it's the L1 to aim and R2 to shoot, which is a little bit weird. I wasn't kind of used to that. Maybe it should have been like maybe L2 and R2 or L1 and R1, because you're kind of stretching the, the back finger like the, the forefinger, the index finger to hold down on the uh, on the R2 button to shoot. It just felt a little bit clumsy to me. Maybe you can change it in the settings. Uh, but again, you just get used to it, don't you? You acclimatise to it. I have. Uh, everybody does after you spend a certain amount of time with the game. So it's not a problem. It's just weird when I first started playing it. But like I say, you get used to it. So yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Graphically, very, very good. Um, the immersion, I really like it. The big problem with the game, and it was it was immediately obvious, and it happens like every 10 seconds or something. You cannot fail to miss it. And it is the, the screen tearing. And it is woeful. It is so bad. I have no idea what the 360 version's like. The PlayStation 3 one is horrendous. But here's the thing, it doesn't spoil the game. I'm still really liking it. And I mean really liking it. I'm really getting into it. Uh, maybe I'm like a couple of hours into the game. And I'm not just necessarily playing the missions, which of course I'm doing. I'm just driving around, just listening to the music and just taking in the scenery and the sights and like the steam coming up uh, from like the, uh, what do you call it, like the, the things from the ground, can't even, what the hell do you bloody call them? Can I remember? Um, like the potholes or whatever and the, the snow coming down, it just looks really good and the old fashioned kind of 
wording on and lettering and styles on the uh, buildings and all that kind of thing. It's just a really nice representation of New York in, in the 40s. So I'm just really liking that experience. And on top of that, like I said, the game's actually really good. But by the time I make my next vlog next week or maybe three weeks from now, I, I don't think I would have finished it, but I'd be a, several hours more down the line. So I'll have more to talk about it then. But yeah, anyway, Mafia 2, check it out. It is really, really good, uh, so far at least. Uh, a very short amount of time into the game, maybe a couple of hours or so. But I'm absolutely loving it, and I can't believe it's taken me 10 years, almost, to to buy it. It's just unbelievable. Uh, I wonder how many more games there are out there that I've really wanted for a long, long time, but never got around to doing it. Uh, I don't know why. Why do we leave these things so long? It's ridiculous. So there we are. Not too many games, but a decent little selection, nonetheless. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you to everyone who, like I say, left a comment. Uh, or if you do go back and leave a comment, thank you to, uh, to all you lot. Uh, just for watching it in general, it, it was nice to get a, a good kind of positive reaction, I suppose, having been away for three and a half almost months. Uh, you know what it's like, I've said it a million times before, but you don't make a vid and then the weeks turn into months and you start to lose touch a little bit. And then sometimes you do think, oh, I can't be bothered. But when you can be bothered and you do come back and you get a good reaction, a good reception, it, it reminds you how great YouTube is, you know, with the, uh, you know, meeting like-minded people. So yeah, thanks to all those people. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Uh, not that I've had, a, you know, thousands or anything, but for everyone who does, I appreciate it. And uh, whether you like, whether you comment, maybe you're a silent viewer, uh, just thanks for watching. I appreciate it. So until my next vid, which will probably either be next week or three weeks from now, and it will be a, a vlog, I think, unless I come up with some idea beforehand, then thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.